How's the road? It's a bit bumpy. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, hey, nerdlings. What's up? Looks like we're on the road. We're on the road again. Where are we headed off to? Oh, we're heading to the past, to Oklahoma City, to the Renaissance Festival. 1561 to be exact. where there's nothing but the cows all grazing in the plains. Looks good. Hey, well, you know what? We are going to be at this Ren Fest any second now. Uh, you're going to have to excuse us. We need to get changed real quick. We'll be right back. Ah, there we go. That's a little better. Now we looked apart and uh, just in time because looks like we are here. Well, my lady, welcome back to your element. So everything that's in here is going to be made out of uh, 1095 high carbon spring steel. Uh, what's nice about it is when we get it, it's all coal rolled, and so we know it's 1075 all the way through. We know we're not going to have any spots of dead steel or other other things in there that we don't want, other impurities. Uh, what we do is we heat treat it in uh, liquid salt. Uh, it gets tempered in an oven, usually for about six to eight hours. It's all oil bath. Uh, when it comes out, turns out like this, it ends up giving it this nice kind of dark color. It's unintentional, it's just a bluing process because of the salt and the oil. Uh, we love it, so we keep it on there. And then when it turns to a polished piece, it has to be prepped before this just to be polished. And it is a high carbon steel, so polish is really sometimes kind of harder to get than other pieces. Uh, carbon steel doesn't like to buff. 
Uh, the tang is roughly on any piece, roughly about an inch wide, and it does go all the way through. It is one solid piece, every piece is, as you can tell by anything that you can see right through it. If you took the cord off, there's electrical tape under there and hand pieces of wood that I hand shape for each one. The reason for the electrical tape is strictly to keep the handle from rotting. But if you take it off, you'll see a nice big, about an inch or so uh, width tang. The pommels are drilled a little past halfway, hand tap, threaded rod goes down to about here. I weld them and then I anneal them and I beat the snot out of them. And if they stand up to it, they get to move on from there. Uh, all the blades are guaranteed. We do them all by hand from scratch. We have no presses, uh, no stamps, anything like that. We do do them all by hand. And the easy way to tell that is as you look at them, you'll see subtle differences in between the grind lines, the shaping of it in general. Some are more curved than others. And that also has to do with the heat treating process. Sometimes in liquid salt, they'll straighten out. Sometimes they'll take a little bit more dramatic curve. It really just depends. All the different shapes and designs are all based on historical pieces. Uh, we do uh, our own version of them, or the, you know, the Badger Blade take on it in a way, if you want to call it that. Uh, but they stand up. Everybody really seems to like them. These were a lot of fun when we first made them. We tested them out by chopping up uh, a fridge that we have that's right outside the break room, Badger and I. And, you know, when you make new stuff, you got to test it out, make sure it works. Four-footers or two-handed bastard swords or claymores, however you would like to classify those, that's fine. I'll leave that up to everybody else because everybody has their own opinion on it, that's fine. Some katanas, which are always a badger blade staple. And some wagasashis on the table as opposed to the rack because, well, I brought more stuff than I had room for. Short swords, bastard swords of three different sizes, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and three quarters. I got some two inch barbarian pieces, short swords, another saber over there. The Polish sabers are a lot of fun. We just started doing those probably about four or five years ago. We don't do them that often, but they, they do come out pretty well. Tom, you're, uh, you're missing out. This is, what, this is what you're missing out on. You don't get to come to the rent fair with us. That's a shame. That's that's a shame. She was even asking about you. Yeah, I was asking if you were going to show. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Did you seriously just get a cat girl to polish her sword for me? I'm actually quite aroused. Sega Tom, are you into furries? No, I believe she should keep it well trimmed down there. This author here is a very good friend of ours. She's also within the pagan heathen community like we are. She has some great books that explains basically how to be a modern day heathen. We have some home protection smudging kits right there too. It's sage, palo santo, and crystals. Our Valhalla ladders are a totem. The Vikings would go, most people would say raid. They were explorers also. They would go to different places and they would pick pieces of driftwood up from all the different beaches and stuff they went on and they would use it as a, a, a totem for protection in their house. They'd go back and string them up like this. And the reason they did that was when Odin came to Midgard for the first time with his brother Veer and V, no creatures that lived on Midgard. So they, they created man, and they created man from a stump of a driftwood. So that's why we collect driftwood and do it as a totem for protection with our house. We're asking Odin to help us and protect us. What, what do you think? You I think I settled on these two. There was like 25 of them I wanted, but I think I'm going to settle for these two. <laughs>
to emulate somebody that has a little bit more money so they can make it look fancy. So typical in history, most of your hammerheads are about this small, even the big giant do hammerheads, because you want a smaller head to transfer the energy. The wider it is, the more it's going to be spread out and less damage is going to ensue. So this would be typically used to dent in plates, typically on the knees, the joints, and in this part here is you hook it in after you get it out. So basically the can. <laughs> so the French, which was at the time their enemy, would have peasants in the front line. So they would see somebody with this giant sword on fire in their armor in black, and they would think they were fighting the devil. So they, the peasants, who didn't want to be there in the first place, went the other direction. <laughs> Handmade Leather Dragons, Dragon Hatchery. You got so many dragons. I do. You have a name for them? I haven't named them yet. They haven't told me what their names are yet, but I have two new babies. And you got a new baby too. If, uh, if Kaus doesn't eat them first. Yeah. Ow, ow. Where do they get all the feathers for those masks? Oh. My lords and ladies, we've only just begun! Have we had enough music yet? Thank <laughs> you. 
Do they have your colors? They do actually. Nice. Which are? Oh. This one and that one over there with the yellow in it. Those are the Douglas colors. Clan Douglas of the Clan Mick Douglas. There's no Mick. I like the orange one, and you can never have too many dragons. Look, there's dragonflies, the little dragonfly tails. Primarily sealed in a wrapper, so it's the same stuff they sell butcher's box for, so it's hyperallergenic. Anybody can drink out of it, and it won't ever have a problem. Well, hello! It's nice to meet everyone. I'm Artemis. I am the painter of the night skies. I paint the galaxies, the sunsets, the auroras, the stars, all the things. Now, if anyone tells you that Pluto's not a planet, tell them that I painted him as a planet, so he is a planet. Look, he's right here. He's a planet. He's a planet. I'm excited for my quail. I think that's my favorite thing here. <laughs> the fairies are savages. Don't let people lie to you. <laughs> Bonjour, now. I am Soleil, the crystal fairy, but you may call me Sol. I am the youngest fairy in the Glen, and I um, love, 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 love shiny, sparkly things. I feel so at home here. I do. This is Tibbs. Yes, Tibbs is my little friend. He comes with me to paint the night skies. He'll just stay right here. He's my little, he's my little flight partner. <laughs> Hello, I am Willow Salix. I am the doorkeeper of the Green River Forest. This is my first year in Castleton and I'm here with my cousin Oakley who introduced me to everyone. So, Miss Tiger, you're very brave, right? I. So I have a question for you. Would you do me a favor? I'm not sure. So 
I paint the night skies, right? And um, all of the sunsets and the stars. Well, sometimes the stars get rebellious and they'll fall. This is a piece of a falling star. Would you take care of it for me? Yeah? All right. Now, don't forget, you're taking care of Artemis's stars. All right? And what's your name, just in case I have to, you know, check up? Aries? Aries. Aries. I love that. It's a cute name. It's a beautiful name for a beautiful tiger like yourself. And if you drop it, just make a wish. He likes to grant wishes when he falls. <laughs> So, got a new night shirt, something, something to toss on, just... <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't share how awesome it smells. <laughs> What do you got? I got a root beer float with ice cream. It's almost like a cheesesteak, but it's a burrito, and you got cheese in it too. So come on down to the to get your full money at the Fool's Pantry at the Castle of Muskogee. It's 
So we are dragon pets, and we have all kinds of dragons, whatever dragon you may need. We do make them all by hand, so no two are ever quite alike, and they all have their own characteristics to them. But whatever your dragons need, whether it's a cute one, mean ones, zombie ones, we have all of them. So all you gotta do is come on down to one of the Ren Fairs, your local Ren Fairs, and we'll be right here. Yep, now I've gotta think of two names. Yeah, because he's got two heads. He does have two heads. Two heads are better than one. I don't know if you can see. See how pretty he looks when you see the light through him?
All right, well, I guess that about does it. Did you have fun? I had a blast, and I'm very sad to already be leaving, and we haven't even left the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. I got a new friend. Guess we'll see you next time, nerdlings. See Bye. you, nerdlings.